Hi everybody, it's Mr. Gerhard and uh, this is going to be a little bit of a review for the Chapter 3 test. Um, I've just gotten some new software, a new webcam, and, and a couple other things, uh, a new bamboo tablet right here. So we're uh, going to try this out. <clears throat> I'm going to start it off in my Algebra 2 class, but you guys kind of get the, the first taste of uh, a new technology here and um, we're going to see how it works. So hopefully you uh, get an opportunity to learn something. Like I said, we're going to go over the review packet they had in class from either Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, I'm just going to talk through the different uh, opportunities or, or problems that we have here. All right, so follow along and uh, feel free to rewind or record or um, you know fast forward if you understand something and we'll go from there. All right, so the first problem is up on the screen here, and it says for the polynomial p of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2, find the following. And we've got to find the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the local maxima, local minima, and we have to graph the polynomial. So the first step is actually to go to our calculator and graph the polynomial, which is what I did here. <clears throat> and you can see right here is our graph, and you can see that it crosses the x-axis at negative 2 and at 1, and so we can show both of those. Because it bounces here off the x-axis, we know that's a multiplicity of, uh, of 2, or an even multiplicity. It could be more than that, but we know it's only 2 because there's only a 3-degree polynomial. All right, so 1 and negative 2 are our zeros. We can also see that it crosses the x-axis here at 2. So going back to our um, graph here, let's, let's uh, write down some information that we know. We said at negative 2, was a zero. We also said that one was a zero, and if we wanted to, we could say that's a multiplicity of two because uh, again, it occurs twice. We can also put those on the graph. There's negative one, or there's one, and there's negative two. We knew the y-intercept. If I plug in zero, that term becomes zero. That term becomes zero, and two is our y-intercept. So zero, two is our y-intercept, and we also saw that from the graph. So there's our y-intercept. Um, local maxima and local minima. Well, let's go back to the graph, <clears throat> and we can find those on our calculator. Now, if you have a, an 84, um, you're going to want to go second trace maximum, second trace minimum, and left bound, right bound, so on and so forth. Here we go to menu, analyze graph, and then we're going to find the maximum. It's asking for me for a lower bound, and you can see it changes to this lines here. Lower bound just means here's our maximum, I want to go to the left of it. So I click, and then it says upper bound. I go to the right, click, and you can see now that this negative 1, 4 is our maximum point. So that's good to know. <clears throat> we can also go ahead and find this minimum point, which we're pretty sure is 1, 0. But let's just make sure, analyze graph again, minimum, left bound, right bound, yep, 1, 0. That's our minimum point. So <clears throat> going back to our graph on the review, we know that right here is 1, 0. That's our minimum. We know that negative 1, 4 is our maximum. Um, and then the other thing that we can do is just write it in over here. We can say negative 1, 4, and 1, 0. Those are our minimums and maximums. Even though the graph goes on forever, up, and down forever, there is no real maximum or minimum. But on the flip side, when we're looking at these points, this right here is the highest point in the local region. That's why it's called the local maxima. This is the lowest point in the local region, so that's the local minimum. And then the last thing we want to do is just get a couple extra points. So we can do that by going Control T. If you have uh, the 84, just do second graph. And we can see 0, 2, we got that one. 2, 4, 3, 20 is a point. Um, we can also go here and see that negative 3, negative 16 is a point. So we can go ahead back to our graph and plot those. So th um, what do we say? Whoops. said negative 3, negative 16. So let's plot that. Negative 3, negative 16 right there. Uh, negative 2, 0, 1, 4, 0, 2, 1, 0. Let's go back real quick and look at 2 and 2, 4, and 3, 20. Okay, so we'll put those on there. 2, 4, and 3, 20. And then we just do our best to try and connect those dots and make it a smooth and continuous graph. If it can't be smooth and continuous, then it's not a polynomial. And so I know some of you guys made that mistake on 
uh, the first quiz. So make sure it's smooth and continuous. All right, moving on to the second one. <clears throat> It says synthetic division to find the quotient and remainder when this is our uh, divid, uh, dividend and this is our divisor divided by x minus 2. Um, we can do synthetic division, okay? Uh, the only time we can't use synthetic division is when we're dividing by something other than x minus a number or x plus a number, okay? Since we're dividing by x minus 2, we can use synthetic division. So let's go ahead and let's write it down. 2 is going to go in the box because that's what we're dividing by, x minus 2. Then we write the coefficients. Now we're missing an x cubed term. So when I write this down, I'm going to write 1, 0, negative 4, 2, and 5. Skip a line, draw a line, bring down the 1. Then we go 2 times 1, which is 2. Then we write it in the next spot. 0 plus 2 is 2. And then we multiply up. 4, add down, 0, multiply up, 0, add down, 2, multiply up, 4, add down, 9. Now in synthetic division, this number right here is our remainder. So we want to make sure we know that that's the remainder. The other thing is, this represented x to the fourth. Now it's representing x to the third. Okay, so our final answer is actually going to be x cubed plus 2x squared. This is 0x, but there's no sense in writing 0x because it's 0. And then plus 2. Now, the way that I want you to write the remainder is to take this 9 and put it over x minus 2, which is what we're dividing by. And so this right here is a quotient plus the remainder over the dividend or the divisor I should say. So x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2 plus 9 over x minus 2. That's our final answer. Okay. Down here we have to use long division because of this 2x squared. If it were 2x we'd still have to use long division. If it was just x minus 1 then we could use synthetic division. So let's go up here <clears throat> and let's write this out. Now we're missing some terms so I'm going to write these out so that we can do this um, in a little bit more organized fashion here. So we're going to write, let's see, 2x squared plus 0x, we're missing that 0x term, minus 1. We're going to divide that into 2x to the fifth plus 4x to the fourth minus x cubed minus x squared plus 0x plus 7. All right, so <clears throat> When we do synthetic division, we're looking for this first term and seeing where it goes into this first term. So what times 2x squared is 2x cubed uh, to the fifth? And that would be just x cubed. Now, even though I focus on just the first term here and the first term here, I need to multiply everything by this x cubed. So x cubed times 2x squared is 2x to the fifth. x cubed times 0x is 0x to the fourth even though it's just zero, and then minus x cubed. Now, when we divide, the next step is to subtract. <clears throat> I subtract by changing the signs and adding. All right, That way it's going to simplify any of those minus negatives and so on and so forth. So 2x to the fifth and negative 2x to the fifth cancel out. 4x to the fourth minus 0x to the fourth, that's just 4x to the fourth. And then x cubed and positive x cubed, that's 0x cubed. I'm just going to write 0x cubed down there to keep a placeholder. And then we bring down the 0x, or the negative x squared. Next step, 2x to the second times what is 4x to the fourth. So I'm just going to say 2x squared. 2x squared times 2x squared is 4x to the fourth. So we write that down, 4x to the fourth plus 0x cubed. My, that is negative, oops, negative 2x squared. Sorry about that. All right, so then when we change the signs, again, that becomes positive 2x squared. And then we um, get this to be just x squared. And then plus 0x, and then plus 7. All right, I'm going to extend this here real quick. Now, 
this is not something that occurs very often. It won't occur on your test or quiz. But there is a way to get 2x squared to go into x squared. And it's by adding 1 half or multiplying by 1 half. 1 half times 2x squared is just x squared. You get 0x there, and then you get negative 1 half here. That causes a little bit of a problem, but it's just fractions, so you know how good everybody is with fractions. We can go ahead and finish <coughs> this part right here. Cancel, cancel, and then this right here is 7 and a half or 15 halves. All right, so there's our remainder. And we're going to put that over what we were dividing by, 15 halves over 2x squared minus 1. Mrs. B just came in to get some uh, printing, so just wanted to make you guys feel like you're regularly in class. All right, and that's our answer. Like I said, this right here is not something that's going to happen very often, but it could, and if it does, that's what you do is use that fraction. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Um, the next page will be another video, so feel free to flip to the next page.